Hello, I am Dr. Marwa Qaisi, and today we will talk about the refractive index deductor. It's named as differential refractometer since it will differentiate between two samples depending on their refraction. First of all, let's know what the meaning of refractive index. The refractive index or the index of refraction is a dimensionless number that describes how fast light, or in another meaning, the velocity of the light that will travel through the material. And an equation is equals the velocity of the light in empty space divided by its velocity in the substance. It describes by Snell the Descartes law as the refractive index represented by the simple n and is equal to the sine c which is the velocity of the light in the empty space over sine v, which is the velocity of the light in the sample. The refractive index deductor then is the deductor that will measure the refractive index for the analyte relative to the solvent. It will measure the molecular ability to deflect light in a flowing mobile phase in the flow cell, or as known, the sample cell, relative to the static mobile phase contained in the reference cell. Here we have two cells, or a cell with two parts, the sample cell and the reference cell. The sample cell will contain our sample plus the mobile phase, while the reference cell will contain only pure mobile phase with a specified refractive index, separated by diagonal glass. It's often used for the high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC and also it can be used for the size exclusion chromatography. It concerns to be detector, uh, a universal detector. Since it can detect anything with a refractive index different from the solvent and it's considered as the only universal detector in HPLC. As we mentioned, it's used in HPLC to detect substances, but these substances must be with limited or no UV absorption, such as alcohols, sugars, fatty acids, carbohydrates, triglycerides, surfactants, and so on. Uh, when we talk about the principles for the II detectors, the detection principle involves measuring refractive index when light is passed through an analyte containing cell, or as we said, the sample cell, as compared to a reference cell containing either air, mobile phase, or transparent material. But in the, these three situations, the refractive index must be, must be specified. Let's look uh, to the figure uh, uh, in the left. When the light leaves one material and enters another, it bends, or in another mean, it will refract. The refractive index of material is a measure of how much light bends when it enters. The differential refractometer will contain a flow cell with two parts, as we said. So, when we look to the figure A, when only solvent is passing through the sample component, the measured refractive index of both components will be the same. But, when we look to the figure B, when an analyte passes through the flow cell, the two measured refractive index are different. And this difference appears as a peak in the chromatogram as shown in the figure at the right. Here we have an optical schematic for the deflection detector. And here the principle is refractometry. Um, when no sample is a present in this uh, a figure, the light passing through both sides will focus on the photodetector. A sample will use through one side. Here will uh, uh, appear a new beam rather than the incident beam, which is the deflected beam. And this results in a change in the photon current falling on the detector, which then unbalanced the detector. The extent of unbalance is recorded on a strip chart recorder. The greater the II difference between sample and mobile phase, or air or any transparent material, 
the larger the ambulance will become. Thus, the sensitivity will be higher for the higher difference in the refractive index between sample and mobile phase. But if we look about the complex mixtures, here the components may cover a wide range of refractive indexes. And some of them may closely match for the mobile phase refractive index, so becoming invisible to the detector. There is many factors that will affect the refractive index, and the most important three are the nature of the media, the color of the light used, or in another mean the wavelength, and an example is the red and the violet light, since the refractive index for violet light will be greater than the refractive index for the red light. And another factor is the physical conditions like temperature. So here, the blue cell is the reference cell that contains only solvent. The green cell is the sample cell that contains solvent plus analyte. And the red spot is the light that will pass through these two cells and then will reflect. Here we have two columns. The analytical column where we inject our sample that we elute in the sample cell, and the reference column where the solvent is eluted to the reference cell. And then the light will pass through these two cells and reflect as a mirror, and then it will be separated by diagonal glass to reach the detector and detect it. For the applications, we have three major applications for the RI detectors. The first one is to identify the sample by comparing its refractive index to a known value. To assess the purity of the sample by comparing its refractive index to a value of the pure substance. And to determine the concentration of the solute in solution by comparing its refractive index to a, a standard curve. And here there is a uh, proportion between the concentration of the solute in the solution and the amount of the deflection, which is direct proportion. So, any increase in the concentration of the solute will increase uh, the amount of the deflection. Advantages for this type of detectors, first of all, and the biggest one, is being the only universal detector. It has low sensitivity to dirt and air bubbles and ability to cover entire refractive index range from 1 to 1.75 RI within single balance cell and has almost low price. Add-on features for this type of detectors that uh, uh, make them pissed and better than other types of detectors. The first one, they include dual temperature control. They have an improved baseline stability. They have low noise. They have a software compatibility and automated sequences. And some of them have lower solvent consumption, thus much lower cost of analysis. The limitations, the one uh, that has the biggest limitations and very big drawbacks for this type of detectors is a lack of sensitivity. Plus, it's a temperature-dependent device, so the column and the detector both must be thermostated. The detector is sensitive to flow variations. The soul is quite fragile, so anyone uh, uh, will using this detector with the higher flow rates must be very careful. General is the ability to easily remove and clean the cells when a clocking as occurs. And they are not suitable for a gradient illusion since the refractive index detector is pure instrument. So any changes in the eluent composition require rebalancing of the detector. And as we know, in analysis that requires a gradient illusion, the mobile phase composition is changed during the analysis to make the separation uh, efficient one. And when we use uh, the detectors in a series, the RI detector must be the last one. And thank you.